I'm so glad that you have joined us for this uh, devotional in this summer devotional series here through Bellevue. And uh, today I want to talk to you about solitude and silence and discerning God's will. Solitude and silence and discerning God's will. You know, there's so much noise in our lives. There is this constant information overload uh, in our day. We're standing in front of this continual fire hose of digital content. Think about it. Your mobile device so, connects you to constant barrages of social media, news notifications, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, opinions after opinions after opinions come firing like a machine gun at us. The 24-hour news cycle churning and spinning the same five stories over and over again each and every day. And the problem is we are filling our lives with all of this noise, all of this static, but we never reach out enough for enough, rather, solitude and silence. The kind of solitude and silence that we need in order to properly and deeply think or properly and thoroughly discern what God is doing in the clamor of all the noise. You know, Jesus was one who knew everything. He had all the information. He is God's Son, right? And yet you never see Him overwhelmed or distracted by the information. He could cut through it. He knew who He was. He knew knew what was needed. He understood the will of God. He had discernment. And oh, that that would be our stories as well. He was never overtaken by the constancy of the noise, but rather he routinely pulled back and got away from the clamor to know the Lord and allow God's presence and still small voice to speak to him. You know, noise is addictive. In what ways are you addicted to noise? I want us to look at the Gospel of Mark, (coughs) excuse me, chapter 1, beginning with verse 35. This is a passage of Scripture that I teach people often, particularly when I seek to teach them how to spend time with God. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, this, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all, the, all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. My friend, I used to think that I could rev the engine of my life at 100 miles per hour constantly, And as long as I was studying God's Word and reading God's Word, even if it was in a hurried fashion, that I would somehow grow closer to the Lord, have a a more sensitivity to His presence, and be a more godly person. And I was wrong. We need to, we may need to have times in our life that are busy. We may have a lot of things to do. But we had better become a people who know how to seek and reach for solitude and silence on a regular basis. Where we can stop and be quiet and listen to what the Lord is saying to us. Have you had those quiet moments with God's Word to allow His Word to to just wash over your life? To to come in like waves and do uh, His work in your soul? You know, I believe that we all need to have some time each and every day in God's Word, reflecting on it and asking the Lord to speak to our hearts. Jesus stopped and pulled away, the Bible says, and found a place of solitude. He went somewhere where the demands of daylight, where the, 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 uh, the, the distractions of others would not bother him. And he, he carved out some time for God. I encourage you to do that regularly in your life, daily if at all possible, and spend some time with God in solitude and silence. And I mean that solitude, to study God's Word in that solitude where there's no distractions, but also silence. I've been practicing this in my own life. Before I read the Scriptures, I've been pausing 
for two minutes of silence. And in that moment, I seek to be still and be merely aware of my own existence and the presence of God all around me. And I don't try to talk through it or create my own distractions of even verbal prayers. But I just sit before the Lord in silence. The awareness that that gives me of who I am, what God said, and what I need to do is often, I often come to such clarity in those moments. And after I study the Word of God, then I pause for another two minutes and just sit there in silence, acknowledging in my heart my utter dependence on God. I want to encourage you to seek out solitude and silence. You know, many times it gives us more discernment. It did in Jesus' life, didn't it? We see Jesus, he has that solitude, he has that silence, and when the people finally catch up with him and say, hey, people are looking for you, he had clarity and discernment. No, we need to go to these other towns and villages because that's why I've been called. He might not have had that clarity if he had not pulled away and been silent before the Lord. I encourage you to take stock of your life and to, to be silent and in solitude with the Lord a little bit every day aware of your own existence, aware of His presence, and reflective uh, on, uh, reflectant on what He is calling you to do. And then, like Jesus, be obedient in what God tells you. God bless you.